Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger. And my friends, today we're talking fighting game lore, specifically the King of Fighters, and it has a lot of lore. The King of Fighters has been a franchise for a very long time, starting with the King of Fighters 1994 and going all the way to the upcoming King of Fighters 15. Now, there's so many games and there's so much story in the King of Fighters that the story is effectively broken into sagas, where each set of games has their own contiguous plot. And that is exactly what we'll be talking about today, specifically the Orochi Saga, the beginning saga of the King of Fighters, covering King of Fighters 94, 95, 96, and 97. The Orochi Saga, in a lot of ways, is the most important saga of all the King of Fighters games. As one, it is the first one. And being the first one, it informs all the later games. Both a lot of the characters, the majority of characters that you see in a lot of King of Fighters titles, come from this series, this saga. And also, a lot of what King of Fighters has to do, even in the future past the Orochi Saga, has to do with Orochi. When it's all said and done, maybe they beat Orochi, spoilers... But the fallout from all the things that happened in the Orochi Saga plague all the characters for years and years and years to come. So before we even talk about the first game in the series and all the plot within, King of Fighters 94, there's a lot of stuff to cover beforehand. The recent past and the very far past. So first, the recent past. The King of Fighters 94, while the first titled King of Fighters game, is not the first King of Fighters tournament in the SNK universe. In fact, the Art of Fighting games and also Fatal Fury have been host to the King of Fighters. In those days, it was a one-on-one -on -one tournament, so no teams like you find in KOF nowadays, but they were still King of Fighters tournaments nonetheless. And who was the mastermind behind these tournaments? Well, it was Geese Howard, very infamous in the SNK series of games. So both in the Art of Fighting, Art of Fighting 2 specifically, and in Fatal Fury series of games, he has held the King of Fighters tournaments. And in these singular one-on-one -on -one tournaments in the Art of Fighting, Ryo Sakazaki became the King of Fighters champion. And in the Fatal Fury games, Terry Bogard has always been the King of Fighters champion. And they both have beaten Geese Howard to do it, so Terry and Ryo are no pushovers. So that's recent history before the King of Fighters 94. Now to go further back, we got to go really far back. How far back? Well, to the creation of the planet Earth. Maybe that's a little heavy for a fighting game, but hey, it is what it is. When the Earth was formed, so was Gaia. Gaia being the will of the Earth, the, you know, the spirit of the Earth, right? And everything was hunky-dory for God knows how many hundreds of millions of years until these nasty little critters called human beings showed up. Humanity being a little bit of a destructive race, you know, Gaia had to watch out on these guys, right? So Gaia created a being called Orochi, and Orochi is basically there to govern and watch over the human race and make sure they stay in line. And as such, Gaia, Earth itself, imparted Orochi quite a lot of powers and strengths. 1800 years ago is when stuff goes rotten. At this point, Orochi has absolutely had it with humanity. They're too destructive, they're destroying too much of the planet, and, well, it's time to wipe them out and start all over again. And being that almost all fighting games revolve around Japan in one way or the other, especially ones from the early 90s, turns out the war started in Japan. So Orochi and his followers waged war on humanity, and wouldn't you know it, there was some chosen ones in the way to stop them, right? Uh, these were from the clans of the Kusanagi clan, the Yasakani clan, and the Yata clan. And these clan members brought forth their champions and their special sacred treasures. And they managed to defeat Orochi and seal him away for all of eternity, it would seem. And Orochi's been sealed away ever since, for the most part. There's been some difficulties along the way. About 600 years ago, one of the agents of the Orochi, because even though Orochi is sealed away, his agents can still roam the land, tried to basically play the clans against each other. Worked to great success and turned the Yasakani clan against the Kusanagi clan to the point where they made a blood pact with Orochi. Uh, changed their name to the Agami clan, and now their sacred flames have turned purple instead of red. 
and they've been killing each other ever since. So Orochi kind of got the win on that one. And things have been going along that way ever since, and then all of a sudden we hit the King of Fighters 1994. Enter King of Fighters 1994, the first game in the King of Fighters franchise, although not the first King of Fighters tournament. So the King of Fighters tournament has been revived by a mysterious person going only by the name of R. The invites are sent all around the world to all the best fighters in the world, although letting people know that the format will be a little bit different as it'll be teams of three versus the traditional one versus one format. Many different fighters with many different disciplines from all around the world take the call to action and join up in the tournament. Although for the purposes of the story, Team Japan specifically, and even more specifically Kyo Kusanagi, is at the forefront of everything. Team Japan consists of Goro Diamond, a massive judo user, Benny Maru, who is a bit of a flamboyant playboy kind of style, but with electric powers, and Kyo Kusanagi, who is the heir of the Kusanagi clan legacy, the people who sealed away Orochi, and a little bit of a carefree dumbass. So starting in the King of Fighters 94, Kyo is still in high school. So he's not exactly no well world traveler or anything. And he's also not very good at high school, by the way. Uh, he never finishes high school throughout the entirety of the series, FYI. In later games, he's basically a high school dropout. Kyo meets Benimaru and Goro through basically a small martial arts tournament in which he wins. He does beat both of them and decide, hey, well, King of Fighters is a three on three tournament now, so let's all join up together. Before anything else goes down, it's basically what it appears to be on paper. This is simply a martial arts tournament. May the best person and team win. Simple as that. But wouldn't you know it, there's always a catch, right? And in fact, every single King of Fighters game, except for the King of Fighters 14, there's the catch. And actually, even in the King of Fighters 14, stuff goes down. But it's the only tournament in all the King of Fighters game where it just wasn't intended from the start. So the mysterious R, the one who invited everybody to the tournament, is one Rugal Bernstein. And Rugal, well, his intentions aren't fully on the level. Turns out Rugal's not exactly a nice guy. And uh, effectively, the main reason he's inviting people to join and enter the tournament is so he can weed out the weak from the strong, find the strongest possible fighters out there, and well, turn them into statues. He likes to memorialize his conquest by turning defeated foes into statues if they're worthy. And yes, that is guile to his left. There's some more stuff going on, but that's not as apparent in the King of Fighters 95. You see, Rugal, he's missing an eye. How'd that happen? Well, there was a gentleman called Gonitz involved in that. He took his eye and Gonitz, he thought he was a decent fight. Maybe he's worthy of Orochi power. And so he gave Rugal just a little bit of that power and let him run wild. We'll see Gonitz again later on. That's all you need to know for the moment. We'll explain more later on as it's applicable. But basically, Rugal was already one of the strongest fighters on planet Earth, and now with that taste of that godly power, he's all the crazy stronger yet. So this fuels his ego, he's a very ego-driven kind of person, and this is why the tournament is held, so he can match his strength against other people. He's purely fueled by winning and wanting to destroy people who he considers lesser than him. And well, he considers everybody lesser than him, right? So. He's just out to beat people up, and that's a good time for Rugal. Eventually, Kyo Kusanagi and the rest of Team Japan, well, they beat everybody else. They are effectively the winner and have earned the right to challenge Rugal. On the way there, they meet his secretary. This is Mature, of vice and mature fame. These are gifts to Rugal from Gonitz, although Rugal does not know their true nature just yet. Mature takes Team Japan, the victors of the tournament, to this massive aircraft carrier called the Black Noah. And arriving, they see a terrible sight. 
someone is brutally beaten and near death, and that somebody is Kyo's father. Kyo's father kind of disregarded all the rules of the tournament, wanted to fight the top dog, who was Rugal, and, well, frankly, he was no match for Rugal. His fighter's pride kind of overwhelmed his better sense and his natural reason, ran straight ahead, and he paid the price for it. This won't be the only time in the story he pays the price. Uh, we'll learn more about that in the King of Fighters 95, but suffice to say, this gives Kyo a little bit of extra motivation. Oh, now I really gotta fight that Rugal. And finally, they meet Rugal. So Rugal, living in opulence, incredibly rich, incredibly powerful, and he's basically there to just kind of browbeat them before the fight. Frankly, Rugal does not consider any single one of them, or them as a whole as a team, any kind of threat to him. The entire tournament was simply to get the best fighters in the world in front of him, so he could defeat them and turn them into statues. This has been something he's been doing for years and years and years. Rugal is someone who's only known defeat once, and after that defeat he got even stronger, so he's just here to indulge in his little hobby, and the whole tournament was just exactly that, to add some more statues to the collection. And so enter the big boss fight. So the boss fight takes place on the Black Noah, his personal carrier, and one of the things that is held canonically, it is a one versus three fight. Rugal is not interested in a one-on-one -on -one fight because he doesn't consider any single one of them a threat to him, so it's him versus the full team. And like any good fighting game boss, once he loses a little bit, eh, it's time to stop playing around. It's time for you guys to see my true power. So with that, the nice little custom tailored outfit he has, time to throw that stuff off. He has like a black mesh top on, looking all ripped and jacked. And now it's time to get real. He gets a lot more aggressive and a lot more powerful. However, just like all bosses, a boss must go down and he is defeated regardless. And Rugal, he is not the kind of guy who takes a loss very well. So Team Japan defeats Rugal. But Rugal, he's kind of like, well, if I can't win, then all you guys are going to go down with me. Turns out the Black Noah is rigged to blow. And Rugal, he's got the self-destruct switch and he hits it. Now, conveniently enough, everyone from Team Japan, they get out easy peasy. It's like not even an issue. They don't need to show the escape. They are just out. They're free. It's done. Now, Rugal, did Rugal escape is the question. Rugal, while he was a big nasty boy, he was beat. But it feels like there's still more to come. The King of Fighters 94 for the Orochi saga as a whole is a little bit of a prologue, I guess you can say. This is the beginning of everything that's going to be going down. So, Team Japan victorious? Did Rugal survive? Of course Rugal survived, don't be stupid. And so we enter the King of Fighters 95. Rugal, as we know, is not a gracious loser. So he's basically holding this tournament as straight up revenge. He looks forward to getting revenge on Team Japan and basically hurting as many people as he possibly can. Now being a new game, there's new characters and most importantly introducing Iori Yagami. Iori is the heir to the Yagami clan, formerly the Yasukani clan, and he is basically Kyo's eternal rival. Although, don't get it confused, it's not a professional rivalry. It's not because they're from the different clans. They just actually hate each other's guts. Iori is in the King of Fighters 95 as part of the Rivals team, and this team is sponsored by Geese Howard, of all people. He sort of wants an eye on the tournament. Now, the King of Fighters 95 specifically, like pretty much all the games in the Orochi saga, is mostly focused on Team Japan. There's many other characters, many other teams, but Team Japan is always the focus. Saga to saga, the quote-unquote hero team changes, but for this saga, it is pretty much all Team Japan, pretty much all the time. Everyone else has their own stories and plots, but they're secondary to the main event. Rugal's new secretary, Vice, gives him updates throughout the tournament and lets him know specifically Team Japan is doing very well. Team Japan is who his blood is burning to fight again. 
Rugal is itching for the rematch. So throughout the course of the tournament, Team Japan basically steamrolls everybody else. It's effectively an inevitability that they will be the winner of the tournament. And Rugal is exactly planning on that, because besides just the fight, he also wants to mess with them a little bit. And he has a very, very special surprise for them, and Kyo specifically. As he has captured Kyo's father, the one who made the brash kind of jump at Rugal in the first tournament, and he is now brainwashed thanks to Vice's master brainwashing skills. They do have to win the tournament first though, and in the finals, Kyo and Iori do finally meet up. And while they are both fairly comparable in direct strength, the simple fact of the matter is, Team Japan has a stronger team. Eiji Kisaragi and Billy Kane are no Benimaru and Goro. So Team Japan beats out Geese's bought and paid for rivals team. And what do you get exactly for winning the tournament? Well, naturally, it's sleeping gas. Team Japan is knocked out and delivered lock, stock, and barrel to Regal. So now, not in too much of a position to really do anything, they have to listen to Regal's nice little villain speech. Wake up, my Asian friends. And here is where Regal lays it all out on the table. He wants... Revenge, basically. They embarrassed him in the first game. And how he is going to do that is by debuting a newly brainwashed Saisu Kusanagi, Kyo's father, against him. He is so far gone that he has to do what Rugal says. And plainly put in video game terms, Saisu is now the mid-boss. He is the guy you get to fight for Rugal. The Goro to his Shang Tsung. The Sagat to his M. Bison. Now, thankfully, there's one little trick about all of this. Is that he's basically a total pushover and completely easy to steamroll. Uh, when it comes to SNK bosses, as famously difficult as they are, he is not one of them. So, Kyo kicks his dad's head in, undoes the brainwashing because, of course it does. Why not, right? And now it is time for the proper battle. So the thing is, yes, Rugal lost the last time around, but Rugal is not the same Rugal they fought before. This is Omega Rugal. This Rugal fully embraces the Orochi power. Before, when Gonitz has given Rugal the power, he basically tried to be as much as himself as possible and just using it for a little bit here. He is fully embracing it, and he is stronger than he's ever been. But the thing is, like all bosses, he will be defeated in the end. But one thing later games make very clear to mention is Team Japan didn't really beat him. They more survived him. That Rugal self-destructed because he could not handle the Orochi power. Only people of the true Orochi bloodline can use the power to the extent he was trying to use it at. And thus, he dies. So without that specific factoid, they might not have beaten him. Effectively, in tapping too deep into the well of Orochi power, Rugal beat himself. But as far as Team Japan's concerned, they whipped him and that's all there is to it. And Orochi, well, what is that? They've now seen flashes of the Orochi power in Omega Rugal, but they don't really know anything greater at play just yet. They might not be fully keyed in just yet, but Saisu, the father of Kyo, he knows something more is going on, that there is greater evils to come in the future. There's a lot more than just these very elaborate martial arts tournaments happening and going on. Now, enter the King of Fighters 1996, and before the proper tournament and game starts, there's actually quite a few things that happen behind the scenes. So first off, I guess we should say Gonitz has been very, very busy. After the events of the King of Fighters 95, perceiving Kyo as maybe a threat, he goes and meets Kyo and challenges him to a battle, and frankly, he completely whips him for free. He hospitalizes him. So as a potential threat to his plans, he no longer considers Kyo too much of a big deal. 
He gave Rugal a bit of that power all the way back before the first King of Fighters 94 tournament just to see how he might do holding that power as a potential host of Orochi, as Orochi will need a host to manifest in the regular world. To move that plan along, although Rugal has failed, Gonitz went and broke the seal that was put in 1800 years ago. This was guarded by the Yata clan, and specifically one Chizuru Kagura's sister, who looks exactly like her and she's in later games, and she was going to have a different model, but that's too expensive, so she just looks like her. So Gonitz kills Chizuru's sister and breaks the seal, and now we enter the King of Fighters 96. One last parting gift from Gonitz, though. Due to the fact the King of Fighters tournaments you do need a team, Iori no longer has a team as he kind of brushed away uh, the Geese Howard connection. He did not care for them. Gonitz gifts him Vice and Mature. And it's kind of a deal where they both know they're playing each other. Vice and Mature being part of the same organization as Gonitz is, the Hekeshu, they are all about trying to bring Orochi back. And having them directly in the King of Fighters tournament can help. And Iori, well, it's two more bodies for him to help get revenge on Kyo Kusanagi. As long as he can beat Kyo, that's really all he cares about. And having two strong teammates helps move that forward. So now another year, another KOF. That's pretty much where we're at, right? There is some new faces joining, most notably Vice and Mature, and a lot of the classic faces you've come to expect at this point. Although this time around, Geese Howard is joining the tournament personally. He very rarely shows up in the King of Fighters as a direct playable character in the canonical games, so it's a pretty big deal. He's never actually a big deal in the plot of the King of Fighters, it's just more that he's always keeping an eye on stuff. That all said though, by now you probably know the drill. We have a very large cast full of a lot of crazy and cool characters, but in the end, the characters that really matter are the ones that are aligned with Team Japan. Although Iori's influence is now growing and he's also an integral part of the story. A lot of the other characters, even the world famous Terry Bogard of Smash Brothers fame, eh, he's not that big of a deal in the plot. Like Terry's main worries is why is Geese Howard joining the tournament? That doesn't make sense. So if Geese Howard is here to keep an eye on KOF, Terry is here to keep an eye on Geese Howard. Everyone's got their own small stories to play, but on the course of the greater overall story, it is mostly about Kyo and Pals. Team Japan would meet with Iori again in battle, and again, Kyo's team would defeat Iori's team. Probably not too good for Iori's ego. But in the end, just like the last two games, the Japan team kind of runs through everybody, and they become the eventual winners of the tournament. And who is the host of the tournament this time if not Rugal, because Rugal has passed away? It turns out it is Chizuru Kagura, holder of one of the three sacred treasures and part of the three clans that put Orochi away. She held this tournament to see the power of Kyo and Team Japan, and to see if they are strong enough to help reseal Orochi before he escapes. The entirety of the King of Fighters 96 is basically not too much more than a test for Kyo. And part of the test, naturally enough, you have to fight the host of the tournament. So this is where Team Japan does battle with Chizuru. But, well, I think you guys know how this one's gonna go. In that, they completely kick her head in. So the great trial by fire, trial by combat test is all done, and it turns out Team Japan is worthy enough for Chizuru. And the reward for winning the tournament itself, as Team Japan, by beating Chizuru, is the official canonical winner of the tournament, well, it's time for the exposition dump. Going over how Rugal had the Orochi power, couldn't handle it, but the person who gave him that power is still around, and the Orochi seal has to be dealt with before that person can free him. That person being Gonitz, naturally enough. Gonitz, the one who took the eye from Rugal. Gonitz, the one who killed Chizuru's sister and broke the seal. This is the big bad guy we gotta worry about, and this is the big bad guy we gotta stop. 
And also Kyo, in case you forgot somehow, this is the guy who kicked your head in just before the tournament. And as a master of dramatic entry, this is when Gonit shows up. This is where Chizuru calls to Kyo. He has the sacred bloodline of the Kusanagi clan. These are the people who take out the Orochi. And when it comes to minions of Orochi, Gonitz is the strongest so far. Being a proper bad guy before the battle, well, we gotta have a little bit of a speech, right? And basically taunting Kyo and Team Japan of, remember when I beat you up. Stating, Kusanagi, your ancestors may have beaten Orochi, but this time around, this is not how it's gonna go. And enter the battle versus Gonitz. Gonitz is one of the more infamous King of Fighters bosses. King of Fighters bosses are well known to be very cheap. And Gonitz has the moveset to help back that up. And also you might notice in the background the stadium is now totally destroyed. Just by Gonitz showing up it just ripped the entire stadium apart. He has these big pillars of wind that are very difficult to get around. But if you know some patterns, you can cheese them out pretty easily and just destroy them. So that's what I did for recording this video. It's just a lot easier that way. I'm going to save time. And thus, Gonitz is defeated by Kyo Kusanagi and Team Japan. But here's the thing. That's not how this goes. While Team Japan is indeed the canonical winner of the King of Fighters 96 tournament by beating Chizuru, they did not beat Gonitz. The true ending of the King of Fighters 96 is achieved when you have a team of Kyo, Iori, and Chizuru, otherwise known as Team Sacred Treasures. The three members of the three clans that sealed away Orochi all those years ago. And they whip Gonitz, they destroy him. Basically after the tournament is properly concluded, these people are the ones who team up to defeat Gonitz. And in doing so, Chizuru helps Iori and Kyo Kusanagi realize that they need to be together to defeat the higher level Orochi opponents. As it was done to Orochi himself almost 2000 years ago. To deal with these people to a permanent end, you need both the Yagami, aka the Yasakani before the name changed, and Kusanagi bloodlines to put them down. Which, sure enough, there's just one little issue though, in that Iori and Kyo still absolutely hate each other. Also, here's where you get some nice little exposition on some of the problems with Iori. As mentioned way earlier on in the video, since the bloodline kind of betrayed and sided with Orochi to gain some power to fight against the Kusanagis, because they were plotted against each other, their flames have turned to a different color. And they are also unfortunately cursed with a very short lifespan. And this applies to everyone in the Yagami clan. So Iori is condemned to die young. In later games that's brought up, he has a way out and you know what? Well, he doesn't take it. Cause that's the kind of guy he is. But as far as this goes here, we know the Orochi battle is just beginning. And well, these guys need to team up again. Some other things we learn from other story paths is that Vice and Mature are, while technically on the same team as Gonitz, they don't exactly follow orders from him fully. They considered him, basically he did his job because he broke the seal, and after that, well, he's expendable. This is also where we first hear about the Riot of the Blood, which will definitely play a big part in the King of Fighters 97. The details aren't gone into just yet, but just let it be known, it's bad news for anyone who's around it. And that's also the exact problem for Vice and Mature. As sometime before the King of Fighters 97 happens, he goes into the state and loses complete control. He basically becomes a complete and total feral beast, and during this, he kills Vice and Mature. So they make their playable debut in the King of Fighters 96 and they canonically die in the King of Fighters 1996. One real handy trick they have though is in later games they just become ghosts and they team up with Iori again because why not? And don't worry they don't really bother to explain it that much. The whole plotline of the King of Fighters 14 is bringing dead people back to life but Vice and Mature they get to come back to life whenever they feel like it. They're just cool like that. 
I guess. Before we go to the final game in the Orochi Saga, I would like to mention the American Sports Team. So these guys make their debut in the King of Fighters 94, and as far as canonical games go, it's the only game they've ever been in. They fight with the overwhelming martial arts of American sports. Heavy D, boxing, Lucky Globber, who fights with the American martial art of basketball, and Brian Battler, who fights with the most devastating martial art of all time, football. These guys are basically the dummies of the KOF franchise, and they only exist to get crapped on. So they have been invited to the King of Fighters 94 as a martial arts team, and they've been invited to other tournaments too. Here's the problem. They get beat up and their invite gets stolen. You see, King of Fighters invites work on pro wrestling rules. It's not who got the invite, it's who brings the invite. So while they were indeed invited to the King of Fighters 95 and 97, they got beat up before the tournaments took place, they had their invitation stolen, and then the other people got to use them. In the King of Fighters 95, Iori and the rest of the Geese Howard rivals team were the ones to beat them up and take their tickets, and they just entered with those tickets. And in the King of Fighters 97, the New Faces team basically just beat up and humiliate the American sports team and take their place. So this segment is basically to educate you about these fallen heroes. Maybe if they didn't get their invite stolen, they could have been the one to bring down Rugal and the ones to bring down Orochi. I guess we'll never know. Now enter the King of Fighters 97, the final game in the Orochi saga. We've been building up, there's been a bit of a mystery. We had our crazy billionaire Rugal show up and start a fighting tournament. Turns out he was tapping into some weird mystical powers. To straight up, here's people with like almost divine level of ability and destroying stadiums and all that kind of stuff. And they want to resurrect a sealed away god who wants to destroy the human race. So the stakes have definitely climbed over the course of the games. In the KOF world though, despite the last tournament ending with the entire stadium being destroyed you know, nominally on national TV, uh, it's been more popular than ever. It's getting more sponsors than ever and KOF is doing gangbusters as a commercial product. So Chizuru, who got a lot of companies together to host the King of Fighters 96 last year, is basically in position, well, since it's making so much money, we got to do it again this year, because she is a businesswoman after all. So now the plan is basically, well, we'll hold another tournament. It'll make our businesses money at the very least. And also a tournament will bring out Kyo. And if Kyo is here, that means Iori will definitely come and join the tournament as well to try to go after him. And this is another opportunity to get them to work together. And if we can get them to work together, we can finally end the Orochi Menace. The only thing is the Orochi Menace is a lot closer than they think. So enter the New Faces team. This is an all new team for King of Fighters 97. They have not been in any previous games. This consists of Chris, Yashiro, and Shermi. So Chris, Yashiro, and Shermi are a band. And they're a band called CYS. And their nominal reason for joining the King of Fighters tournament is because Iori kind of stole their gig. Iori, when he's not trying to kill Kyo and just be a sour grump all the time, he is an accomplished musician. And frankly, he stole one of CYS's gigs. And just like Iori joins the King of Fighters tournaments to get revenge on Kyo, they joined the King of Fighters tournament to get revenge on Iori. They weren't invited though, so they had to beat up the American sports team to get their invite instead. So CYS, the New Faces team, we'll come back to them in a couple minutes. For now, it's a King of Fighters tournament, so you know how this is going to work. Team Japan is going to clean house. If you're getting a little sick of the idea that Team Japan is always the winner, well, can't really change it for this saga so much. But once we leave the Orochi saga and King of Fighters moves on to other different plots, Team Japan sort of falls off. They're always important, yes, but they stop winning every single tournament. But that's later. This is now. And for now, it's time for Team Japan to keep up their winning ways. So yes, they effectively steamroll through everyone. And for the most part, 
easily win the King of Fighters 97 tournament. There's just one little catch. Iori eventually catches up to Kyo Kusanagi, and of course it's not a warm welcome. The big issue is the Riot of the Blood, which was introduced in the King of Fighters 96. At this point, he is wild with it. It is not something he can control, and he just goes utterly berserk and attacks. While in the Riot of the Blood state, you are effectively turbocharged. However strong you may be, you are that much stronger, faster, more impervious to damage. You become a superhuman version of yourself. Pretty scary stuff, huh? But it is a video game, so you punch him in the face a few times and he goes down easily enough. But it turns out that transformation, that was brought on by another member of the Hekeshu, the Orochi group, and that would be Chris, Yashiro, and Shermi. So now they're Orochi cult members. What happened there? I thought they were band members. Well, turns out both things are true. In their case specifically, they are forever reincarnating agents of Orochi, and only during this tournament did they awaken and remember their true purpose. Which then brings up the fact that if Iori didn't steal their gig, they never would have joined the tournament, so them and their whole plan to resurrect Orochi was literally all pure dumb luck, but don't think about it too hard because they didn't either. So CYS now going by Dragon Ball rules, they have used the energy generated from the tournament and all the fighting to awaken their true forms and also to awaken Orochi himself. At which point you now go into a battle with them and they are a dark mirror of Team Japan. Yashiro matches Goro's strength, Shermi has the lightning of Benimaru, and Chris has the flames. And also their stage has one of the most ripping tracks of all time. Round one. Maybe go. No, seriously, I love that track. It's called Rhythmic Hallucination. Go Google it. So the big battle between Team Japan and Team CYS, the New Faces team, now the Orochi team, goes down. One of the fun things about this battle during uh, the course of the match is every time one of the new members of CYS comes down, the stage itself changes, and you can see everything's just going crazier and crazier. So now there's lightning everywhere while Shermie's on the stage. And when Yashiro shows up, everything just goes straight up volcanic. So a lot of flash going on and just trying to give you a good idea of how powerful these characters are. Yet, however powerful they may be, Team Japan always wins in the end. But for them, winning, well, it wasn't part of the deal. They didn't have to win at all. They just needed a little bit more energy and now it's time for Orochi to be reborn. So just like Rugal was the intended host for Orochi back in previous games, this time around Chris is the host of Orochi. The seal was broken by Gonitz. Iori and Kyo could not get along in King of Fighters 96, so it was never resealed. They have all the energy they need from the fighting tournament, and thus it is time for Orochi to re-enter the world. Shermi and Yashiro give their last little bits of energy to Chris to get the transformation over the finish line. And now Chris is Orochi. The manifestation of Earth's will to defend itself against humanity has returned. So how does Team Japan handle this exactly? Well, just like the King of Fighters 96, they don't. While Team Japan, just like every other team in the game, can go up against Orochi and they all get their own special endings, the canonical ending is the secret team. So Team Japan does win the tournament, just like they always do, but the people to take on Orochi are once again Kyo, Iori, and Chizuru. Iori, realizing the true threat after recovering from the Riot of the Blood, attacking Team Japan, realizes it's time to team up again. That window of prevention he had in the King of Fighters 96 to stop all this stuff, they pissed it away, and now here's the consequence of Orochi is literally in their face now, and he has to be dealt with. Chris transforms into Orochi, the godlike being, and the battle is on. 
Now, unfortunately for Orochi, despite the fact that he's the literal manifestation of the will of the planet Earth, this is a video game. And in video games, bosses lose. So you beat Orochi. And then the question is, well, what now? You mull around a little bit. You can see here there's wreckage everywhere. Once again here, all this beautiful King of Fighters arena stuff completely destroyed. Now that Orochi is stunned, the plan is to contain him and reseal him. The problem is, he's pretty tough. And just like CYS did beforehand, the fact is Orochi can trigger the Ride of the Blood in anyone that he chooses. And this is the exact moment he chooses to trigger Iori yet again. The thing is now, I guess you could say he's getting used to it or whatever, but Yori, while going crazy in the Riot of the Blood state, he can control his free will just a little bit. He hates all the clan traditions, he hates destiny, he hates all that kind of stuff, so he immediately uses his newfound Riot of the Blood powers and immediately turns on Orochi. Now, Kyo gets a little bit of a history lesson here. The incident that was so many hundreds of years ago that tricked the Yasukani clan into becoming the Yagami clan and siding with Orochi and gaining the purple flames, all that kind of stuff, that cannot be taken away. That is always going to be there. But they're still capable of doing the right thing in the end, and that is exactly what Iori is doing. So now, finally, everything's in place. We have the three sacred treasure bearers here. Orochi is being held down, ready for the one final big blow. And that is exactly what Kyo does. He goes for the big final punch. And, well, that is the end of Orochi. Once again, the three clans have teamed up together and put an end to the threat of Orochi. They have destroyed his physical form. The final blow takes a lot out of Kyo and he passes out. His last thoughts were of his girlfriend before he passes out. The thing is, though... There was more people watching that fight than just the people in that fight. And as Kyo passes out, mysterious people come into the scene and take him away. And that, my friends, is the tale of the Orochi Saga. As far as fighting game stories go, it's certainly a lot more elaborate than most. Uh, higher in scale, more like a Mortal Kombat than more of a street level kind of game like a Street Fighter, right? And it took four games to tell the overall plot. Usually, it's just one. But that's the beauty of the King of Fighters as a franchise is they usually go all out and they will do things like take multiple games to tell one story. And frankly, I like it that way. It gives the story a lot of meat. It makes everything a lot more memorable. If it takes years to tell, while it might be a good while, it'll definitely make sure that you stick around and see how it all goes through. The one thing I guess you could say uh, that might be a little bit of a negative is just like any story, there has to be main characters and side characters, right? And throughout the Orochi saga, the main characters are absolutely just Team Japan plus Iori plus Shizuru. And everyone else can kind of go to the side. Even if you're a major character in all of gaming, like a Terry Bogard, you just don't match up to the story potential these guys have. It's not a bad thing, I guess, but neither would I consider it a good thing. But I guess that's the price you got to pay when you tell one big cohesive story over the course of many games you need your central characters and this is how it also works in later games as well like the Ness saga and the ash crimson saga someone has to be the forefront of the game kind of progressing everything forward and in this game it is team japan one thing i always kind of liked about this is the fact that orochi is the will of the earth so earth wants humanity gone basically and humanity defeated earth so we're gonna keep polluting you we're gonna keep destroying all your wildlife and nature and all that kind of stuff you tried to stop us you sent your best guy after us but too bad we beat him up in a martial arts tournament sorry earth thanks to team japan humanity's gonna keep on keeping on so climate change ozone layer plastics in the ocean you can basically all point that at kyo kusanagi now 
Some other smaller things to mention that didn't quite need to make it in the video directly. Uh, team CYS as Team Orochi were looking to sacrifice Kyo's girlfriend as there was a deal with eight maidens back in the day and she's a descendant of one of the maidens. So it just, it's a MacGuffin basically just to give him a little bit more personal stakes because they want to off his girlfriend to help resurrect Orochi. Other things like Hyder and Hyder joins the King of Fighters specifically because of Rugal, but well, he kind of doesn't really do much, honestly. But Hyder has the big eye patch, and it is very much eye for an eye. Gonit stole Rugal's eye, and Rugal stole Hyder's eye. Uh, Hyder really does not like Rugal, as Rugal killed his family just for the fun of it, because he's a rude dude. One thing though for Hyder. The Akari Warriors do go on to win a King of Fighters tournament actually later on. We'll save it for a later video, but the Akari Warriors making up Hydern, Ralph, Clark, Leona, they are the only characters to ever canonically win a King of Fighters tournament and not be the heroes of that game. So hey, good for them. But otherwise, that's about it. This video is almost 50 minutes long now, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'll do my best before the launch of the King of Fighters 15 to get the Ness Saga and the Ash Crimson Saga videos out so you can know all the important story before the launch of the King of Fighters 15. And if you're watching this after the launch of King of Fighters 15, hey, what's up? All that said, friends, though, uh, if you could drop a like on the video, that would help tremendously. These videos take forever and a day to make. They're not usually the kind of style of video I make. So any likes, shares, all that kind of stuff, greatly, vastly appreciated. And that all said, that is the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some King of Fighters.